Deion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Everyone's talking about all-star snubs, and we're going to get into that in a second. But we got to talk about one of your least likely favorite players, Draymond Green. I, I know you're not a fan of Mr. Single Triple, as, as Chuck likes to call him. He recently spoke out in a paraphrase what he mentioned. He talked about Andre Drummond pretty much being told to sit tight until the Cavs are able to trade him. We also heard similar news about Blake Griffin, who the Pistons now are trying to figure out if they're going to trade him or buy him out. So I have to ask you, what are your thoughts on Draymond's comments? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Or do you feel he he missed a couple top a couple points on this? Oh, uh, actually, so all right. So you know what? Since Golden State has been been broken down and beat down, I feel like Draymond has been humbled. So I'm actually kind of okay with him right now at, at at this point. Now, when Clay comes back, who knows? Things might change. But right now, I'm 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 in good terms, good standings with uh, with Draymond. Um, and I actually, I, I agree with him, man. Um, you and I both know we, we, we're both pro player. Um, I mean, I guess there's probably only two owners, you know what I'm saying, that I would honestly say that I, I rock with like that. And that's obviously MJ because, you know, he's the GOAT. And then my main man, Mark Cuban down in, in, in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody in uh, Dallas, you know, that's going through all of that stuff with all the snowstorms and everything as well. Now that I mentioned Dallas. Um, but but I gotta I gotta agree with Draymond, man. There's always a different narrative painted when the players want out of a situation, as opposed to when the owners want to get rid of a player. You know, I hear everybody talking about you know, or it, at least people that's on that side. Oh, you know, well the contracts were signed, and you should honor the contract. Um, but a, a, a part of that that contract was you telling the player that we're going to put you in a position to win. So have you breached the contract then now, if we're not in a position to win, if you don't bring in pieces for us to compete at the highest level to go along with me when I sign my contract. So that, that, you know, that's a part of the, the argument that we don't really speak on because that is one thing when you, when you bring a player in, you know what I'm saying? Especially to a playoff caliber team. One of those things is, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're trying to win championships. So technically you've kind of breached that contract yourself. If you're not putting your team in a position to win, you know what I'm saying? That's one. And then the second thing is in regards to that is it's okay. You know, everybody's tight when a player wants to leave, but let's not forget, even though, you know what I'm saying? Isaiah Thomas might've spoke a little prematurely with the Brinks truck comment. That brother played a playoff game the day after his sister died in a car crash only for y'all to come back the following season to trade him as soon as a shiny new toy comes along. As soon as a better toy comes along, y'all went right along and traded him. Now, the thing that makes that worse is the idiotic fans that out here burning Isaiah Thomas's jersey like he asked to leave Boston. That, that was like the icing on the cake, you know, on that one. So, but did you, but, but did, so did Boston not break the contract then? Because you signed Isaiah Thomas for however long you signed him for. His contract wasn't up when you traded him. If I'm not, if I, if, you know, if I'm not mistaken. He was, he was going into the last year of his deal. Right. So he still, so he said, so he was still under that contract. So, but I didn't, I didn't hear, oh man, the, I, I don't know the Celtics owner's name off the top of my head, but. You know, the owner of the Celtics, you know, he broke the contract. He traded away Isaiah Thomas. Oh, man, that's that horrible. I can't believe he did that. He's a he's a bad guy. He's a cancer to the team. I don't I didn't hear none of that stuff when that when that happened. If I, you know, I, I don't know if you heard that, any of that, Eric, but I didn't I don't remember hearing anything negative being said about the owner, anything negative being said about Danny Ainge, who made the trade. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like, you know, this this. There's a double standard here. So I, I agree a thousand percent with what Draymond said. So there's a couple layers to, this, to the comments that Draymond made and to this whole debate. So the first part, there isn't anywhere in the contract that states the team has to compete, right? Team, everybody fancies themselves as we're going to put a competitive team and we're going to try to win. We know that. But deep down, every team can't win, right? There's only a handful of teams that can really win. 
and especially in the NBA. NFL was different. That's a completely different argument because we know that flip-flops every year between competitive teams and non-competitive teams. But in the NBA, for the most part, you got to have one of the top 20 players in a game to just even be in a conversation, Yes. right? So th there's that part of it. Where I think Draymond was off, and, and to your point about Isaiah with, with the Celtics, you're right. No one criticized the organization. There were some in the media that I did hear were, that were uncomfortable with the trade, that even though they felt Kyrie was the better player, they didn't want to acknowledge, hey, Boston won that deal, because as you said, there was that underlying factor of, you just traded a guy who played hurt and played after his sister passed away. You know, you could have at least tried to work out a contract extension before trading him. So there was always that uncomfortable nature about that trade. And I think even on Cleveland side, they they knew he wasn't fully healthy, but it was also that we're not totally comfortable in telling this guy, let's just stay home. We want to at least try to see if he can work his way into a mega deal, a max, yeah. right? But here's where I think Draymond is off. So he's, he's on point in saying, we got to hold everyone to the same level of professionalism. He is 1000% correct about that. We see it all the time where owners and front office types can do certain things that players can't get away with. In the NFL, I'm a Colts fan. I remember a few years ago where Jim Ursay was found drunk driving a car yep. with multiple prescription pills. He was not fined by the league. He was not suspended in any way by the league. He was not punished in any way by the league. I spoke about that on the show. Right. So in terms of professionalism, Draymond is correct. Here's where I say he's wrong in this particular matter. When he says oh, certain guys have to find out through the media they've been traded. Yes, that's unprofessional. But in terms of Andre Drummond, the team sat down with him and said, we feel it's in the best interest that we trade you to another situation, so we're going to sit you out. So the team did open up the dialogue with Andre Drummond. Now, he may not have liked the conversation, but that's better than the team saying, hey, we're going to report it to the media, but never tell Andre that he's not playing for us anymore. They did communicate with him. The other part of that as well is, you can't have it both ways, at least not to me. If we're gonna, if we're gonna hype up the guys and applaud them for player empowerment, we've got to understand that there's a, another side of that. Player empowerment only works again if you're one of the top 20 players in the NBA, right? If you're Kawhi Leonard, you're LeBron, of course. If you're AD, if you're Paul George, you get to call your shot. You're that powerful within the league. But guess what? For every one LeBron, there are four Andre Drummonds. Those guys don't have control over where they want to go. Those guys don't get to pick and call their shot. And so if we're going to allow guys to turn this into musical chairs of, I don't want to play here, I'm going to go there. I don't want to play here, I'm going to go there. Okay, cool. But for all you guys, big name guys that do that, you're hurting the lower name guys because now those guys become a victim of you wanting to move around so much. James Harden wanted to be traded. On the surface, everybody who's a Nets fan loved the idea. But how do you think Karis LeVert felt? Karis LeVert is a young guy on the verge of a payday. I'm sure he would have loved to stay in Brooklyn and try to win a championship there, right? The, the, the same, obviously, Spencer Dinwiddie. He's hurt, so he's still on the team. But all offseason, Spencer Dinwiddie kept hearing his name come up in trade talks. I'm sure he's a guy who openly recruited Kevin Durant and, and Kyrie to come to Brooklyn, was probably feeling like, no, I want to stay here. I, I wanted them guys to come. Why are you trying to trade me? So... It goes both ways, and I think Draymond was a little, little off for that for that reason. Um, also, it's easy for Draymond to say that because Draymond has had success in Golden State. He has an open conversation with that ownership group. We know he is drastically overpaid for services that he stopped providing three years ago, right? Yeah. So it's easy for him to say, oh, you owners are unprofessional. You guys aren't giving these guys the benefit of the doubt. But, bro, you've been given the benefit of the doubt when you have – under exceeded that contract three years ago. So would it be, and it would be in all fairness, Golden State could easily say, you know what, Draymond, you're right. You haven't been producing. We should get rid of you and move on from you. And if they have that open dialogue with him, he would have to accept that. So yeah. to me, I feel, I, that's where I feel he's a little off. Andre Drummond had the conversation with the front office. They decided to move on. And let's be honest, who wants to be on the Cavaliers right now? Um, Dan Gilbert. Enough. Right. Because Kevin Love ain't played in a year and a half. Yeah. Right. Ain't, ain't nobody speaking up for Kevin Love. Ain't nobody saying, why, why y'all ain't playing, playing Kevin Love? He there, put him on the floor. He won out of there too. Yo, Kevin Love don't care. He got his money and he got a ring. He good. Right. So that's my point. Andre Drummond is speaking about something that, like I said, to me, it doesn't have, it, it doesn't have the impact that he was hoping it would have. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't hit the same. There, there are a lot of guys who, who are forced to move around in this league 
without any voice in the matter. They are plenty. Every time one of these superstars want to get traded somewhere, guess who gets the short end of the stick? The lesser named guys who have to get traded, right? You yeah. think you think Shea Gillis Alexander love he loves living in Oklahoma City as opposed to L.A. I'm pretty sure he probably you know he he would rather be out in L.A. Right, but because Paul George is one of the top twenty to twenty five players in the league, and Paul George and Kawhi said we want to play together, Shea Gillis now becomes a victim of that circumstance. He becomes a casualty of war. Well, that's, so, so I, the, that's the thing, though. So there's gonna be the guys because again, like even you know just to go back to Spencer Dinwiddie, had he been traded, right? Again, he's under contract still with the Nets, and if he had to be shipped out, and and that's somebody who. We pretty much watched come up, got it through the mud with 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 um you know with the Nets, helped them get to the playoffs. Uh, you know what I mean? So and so for him now to be like, oh damn, they brought in James Harden. I mean, it's James Harden, but I'm up out of here. But I was under contract with them, so it, as you know, it, it's, it's it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Right, and and so my point to Draymond is, if if we're applauding the guys for player empowerment. If we're applauding the James Hardens, the Kevin Durant, the LeBrons, the ADs, who get to say, I want to go here, and that's the only place I want to go, then they'll become casualties of war from that. And so nobody is mad, right? Like, nobody is mad at the Laker organization for trading Brandon Ingram, um, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart for AD, right? Because you're the Lakers. We got the better player. So, okay, fine. But what about those young guys who that's the only home they've ever known? Now those guys got to go to a less situation and nobody's crying and saying, oh, the Lakers handled that wrong, man. Lonzo Ball said himself, Lonzo and Brandon Ingram went to interview and Lonzo said, I found out through text. Nobody even called me. I found out through text that I got traded. That's now. So now is that unprofessional? Do we, do we, do we talk about the ownership on that, on that, on that, on that? Because that's who's responsible for, cause I got at least got a phone call. Like you text me, you pull, you pull the Kevin Durant and uh, Russell Westbrook. <laughs> Absolutely, but said you was coming what? back. You texted me and said you was. <laughs> but why didn't why didn't Draymond mention Anthony Davis in his rant? Listen. Because they were represented by Rich Paul. So yeah. again, when you're when you're one of the upper echelon guys, you get to call your shot. Nobody is saying that that guy's acting unprofessional. He gets to call his shot. Unfortunately, the casualty of war is these lesser known guys. And that's why I say Andre Drummond is no different. Andre Drummond is not a top 25 player in the league. No, he's, he's middle of the pack. Right. So he's not going to get treated like one of those guys. They're not going to pull him into the office and say, hey, let's work out a trade partner. They're going to let him know when they're ready to trade him. They're ready to trade him. So they come to him now. Right. They didn't go to him two months ago and say, hey, look. But, but did, he even, did he even want to trade, though? Did he want to leave Cleveland? Like, did he say, did he ever say he wanted out? Because I think that's where, where the trickiness comes in. If he said, I want to trade, I want to leave here, then that's one thing. But if he never actually asked for a trade or asked to leave Cleveland, then now we back to, well, I'm under contract here, and now y'all trying to get something better, y'all trying to get younger, y'all trying to get well, whatever y'all trying to get. The Andre Drummond situation is, I don't think Andre, personally, I don't know this to be fact. I don't think Andre Drummond really wants to be there. I think the only reason he picked up his player option because he's on the last year of his deal was because he's making close to $30 million and he knew he wasn't going to make that on the open market. Yeah. Right. So strategically, it made more sense to opt in for one year, boost my value. He's averaging a double-double on a bad team yeah. and and hopefully get a better contract on a better team. What's his my own? Think my out, right. He, he's, he's in his 20s. He's in his late 20s. Yeah. My outlook on it is... You know, I think... If he if he gets out of Cleveland and lands on a playoff caliber team and is still able to produce the same way he's been producing, he boosts his own value. Yeah. If he goes to Boston or happens to land with the Lakers or land with another playoff team and is still averaging a double double, he'll go into free agency next year and probably get a three year, sixty million dollar contract. So yeah, so so it works out right. But now let's go back right. So LeBron drafted by Cleveland. Runs through his first contract, they do nothing to help him get to a championship. Second contract comes around, he's there for that. The organization has a chance to bring in Amari in his prime. Didn't want to get rid of JJ Redick. So now, when it's time for LeBron to re up again, I'm making that decision. I'm going to, I'm going, I'm out. I'm going, I'm going to Miami because. 
again, a part of that is we are here to win championships. So if you tell me we're here to win championships and you're not actually putting us in a position to win championships, then I'm, yeah, I'm going to want to get up out of here. And for so long in the NBA, there wasn't no outs. You were stuck. That's why we, we see guys like Patrick Ewan, one of the greatest to ever play the game of basketball, but he got stuck with the, with the Knicks organization throughout his whole career. And he never got to do anything. Never. They never brought a solid number two player over. They had a, a solid number three with John Stark, but never a solid number two. So the organization never did anything to, to help him to, to help them win a championship. But he wound up getting caught in the gauntlet because at that time it was unheard of. Superstars didn't have that type of power. They may have had it. They just didn't utilize it. I should say, I'm not gonna say they didn't have it. They just didn't utilize it. But that's what we saw with a lot of these guys. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, I know, you know, yeah, it was a big thing to be in one place for a long time, but I, I guarantee you a lot of them guys that finished their careers with no rings, you know what I'm saying, wouldn't have minded being traded to a team to get some rings if they if they knew the, the, the power that they possessed during that time. Absolutely. And so, and this is why you and I are such a great combo, right? Because when I started my rant early, I said there are three parts to this conversation. The third part of that conversation is perception. And that's specifically media perception. So when you talked about LeBron, you're absolutely right. Now, LeBron is always going to be a very unique case study because he was the first megastar to ever do that. Yes. Make no mistake. At that age, at, at 20, what was he, 25, 26 when he left Cleveland? Yeah. About, yeah. Right? About 25, 26 at, yeah. at the most. Yeah, 26 because he's 36 no, now. Yeah. Yeah, no superstar had ever left their team in that fashion at that age. We had always seen guys who were older, you know, already into their 30s, looking to get a ring. That's now good. they join up with yeah. other guys. Wow. Right. Right. But the media perception completely alters the whole game. Right. If the media likes you, you're always going to get good coverage through the media, even when you're wrong. If the media is trying to find something wrong with you, they're going to hate you. So the media can never find anything wrong with LeBron James. So they always continue to, to, to latch on to the decision. Yeah. Even though we know this is a man who's lived his life in the public eye for over 20 years, right? No issues, no out of wedlock kids, never been arrested, never been in trouble with the law. But there's still okay. people to this day, there's still people to this day who are mad at him for a decision he made in 2010. A decision, a professional decision at that. Yeah, right? business decision. So, are you mad at right. him for, for him for for a decision he made in regards to his business? Absolutely. So that's the third factor in this whole discussion. Draymond's issue should not be with ownership because ownership has to do what's in the best interest of their team. Yes. We as we as fans of the game and as journalists, when we sit here and critique trades, we critique them from the standpoint of did that make sense for your team? Why would you do that? Why would you sign that guy? Right? We don't sit there and say, well, maybe they sign that guy because they really like him because you know he gets along with the guy's wife or whatever. We critique it based off of does it make sense for the team? And so ownership is always going to make the best decision for their team. If they feel like moving on from Andre Drummond is the best decision for the Cavs, so be it. That's a business decision. The way the media covers it is ultimately what's going to decide if we consider someone a cancer or if we consider somebody a bad guy. We all knew that James Harden loved the party. Anybody who has Instagram has seen James Harden in Las Vegas several times a year. Yeah. But it wasn't until he said, I'm leaving Houston and I want out that we started hearing all these wild stories of him leaving on private jets from city to city. And if the team had two days off, he decided to stay in Miami an extra night. We never heard about those stories the eight prior years in Houston. It was only when he said he wanted out. That's not ownership's fault. That's the media deciding now we're going to come at this guy because we don't like how he's handled that situation. Now, it because the ownership, though, I will say this, the ownership does kind of have a little piece in that because now when everything is good, there's certain things that we might know in house that we're not going to let out. But when you want to leave, we're going to let the cat out the bag on a couple of these things here. And you know what I'm saying? Because now we, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you, you're not rocking with us. Okay. So now we don't get no more favors, no more sweeping your dirt under the rug or anything that you may have done. Um, I think that, I think Draymond, would have been better served had he included the media in that in in his statement. And I say that because had he said that when ownership 
does these things, they don't get that type of media coverage. I think that would have served his, his point, uh, you know, a little bit better. And then he could, he, then he should have really, at that point, that was when you bring up, because Isaiah Thomas really is the best case to defend Draymond Green's point because he literally lost probably one of the closest people to him in life went the next day, played a playoff game, did his thing just for y'all to come back the following season and say, Oh, Kyrie's available. Okay. Get up out of here. Isaiah. we don't need you no more. Ky- Kyrie's uh, available, but you know I what? Agree. They got, they got this on end though. <laughs> Boy, I agree. Both, I- both got this though. I 1000% agree. Uh, Isaiah is the perfect case study. He's the perfect example. Um, but like I said, there, there are a lot of different layers to it. And uh, I know myself, I've been critical of the way LeBron handles rosters, right? But yeah. I also understand why he he has that type of handle over it. LeBron views it in a, in a way that, hey, if we win, it's on me. If we lose, it's on me. So give me the other 11 guys who I can go to war with. And I completely get it because LeBron's legacy is tied really to the guys he plays with, right? If the guys he plays with are able to rise to his level, he can now enter the conversation of the all-time greats. Yes. So I get it. Again, like I said, my my thing with Draymond was cool. I get your point, but let's have the, let's open up the conversation. to all these different layers of it. Again, if we're going to, if we're going to encourage player empowerment, we got to see what we got to accept what comes with the other side of that. And the other side of that yes. is there are lesser known players who don't have that type of power. Yes. Right. And, and listen, and with that being said, let's, as if I, before you go, because if I was the owner, I'd be thinking about, I'd be thinking like owner. That's what yeah, I want to be clear. If I own the team, what's best for business. I'm going to do what's best for the team and my bottom line. So I want, I do want to be clear on that as well. So I do understand both sides of the spectrum on this one. Absolutely. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers, and you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk. Live from the camp. Come on, Uh huh. This is Hi, Real playing. Fans Real Talk. Talk. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought.